Welcome back to more Luna Lua tutorials. Two in one day. That's like magic or something. All right, so this time we're going to cover the data class. It's a pretty important thing. Basically, makes your levels better if you have collectibles. A lot less frustrating stuff. You can do a bunch of neat stuff. So let's just get started. First thing you have to do, you have to actually create the data. Um, normally, you can just do my data equals data, and data being the function that creates it. But uh, typically, you want to instead load an API called encrypt. Got to make sure I spell it right. <laughs> and what this will do is that it will just screw up your data file and make it unreadable because otherwise people will just be able to go inside your save file and just modify all the values and screw stuff up. So instead, now you just have to do local, I'll just go with my data, encrypt.data, and that will just encrypt it. So there are a couple arguments to the data class. You've got main one, you have data level, data world, and data global. So for this example, I'm just going to do data, da, date, data level. The fun, the argument basically just affects where it'll save the file. Level will save it inside the custom graphics folder. World will save it inside of the episode folder for wherever your level is. And global will save it inside the worlds folder. So global could be accessed by all episodes. World could be accessed by all levels in your episode. Level, just, just that level in particular. Couple other arguments here. You have section name, which to be honest, I'm not really sure what exactly it does. And uh, use save slot. So if this is true, then it'll individually save files for each of the save slots, but if it's false, then it'll affect all save files. So now that we've, whoops, I'm gonna have to blank that out in the video. Um, uh, so now, let's do something like, let's save a counter for every time you hit a question mark block. So let me just make something really quick in PGE. Wait, I already have a hit event in here. Um, so hit, let's trigger, hit, I love 99 coins in it. But first we have to, have to actually create the file. So you can put this in on star or whatever. Uh, you can put it outside of a function too. So what I'll basically just do is check if my data is equal to, no wait. Um, check if my data get, we'll just call it coin count, sure, it's equal to nil then. So now you just do all your data stuff. So there are basically three functions you use for my da for data, get, set, and save. So uh, using get will obviously just allow you to check what your data for the specific variable is set will just change what the value is and save will actually save it if you don't have save in obviously it won't save at all so since coin count is nil then we're just gonna set it whoops to be one and then save the data so now function on events. Uh, right. And then we'll just do my data set coin, whoops, coin count. I can't type it all day. And then just my data get plus one and my data save. Uh, save this 
Open it. Again. Come on. Oh, wait. I'm an idiot. I actually need to, like... Dang it! I actually need to display the counter. Alright, so it's at 1 because it set it to 1 over here. So now, there we go. Now it's increasing the counter. Thanks, Rebex. Every time you hit the block. And now just exit and save, and it's at 7. So there you go. And you can just combine that with anything like on NPC kill and hiding layers and stuff, which I'll cover in another video to save your collectibles or show a layer if you've like completed a level or something tons of different possibilities with this and that's basically all you need to know about the data class other all the other stuff like data type section name um it's all a bunch of stuff that you'll probably not need um but there's one extra thing to cover so um just gotta go and delete the save which is Proving a lot more trouble than it should be because my computer doesn't work half the time. No, my computer's being garbage today. But instead, let's make this episode wide. So I have another test level in here. Uh, I don't know if I've covered this in another video, but you can actually make Luna Lua files that cover entire episodes. So instead, you're instead of Luna DLL.lua, you're going to call this Luna World.lua. If I cover this already in another video, then feel free to call me a butt. And I'm probably opening a can of worms with this. Um, yes, I don't want to. I want to replace that. Okay, now I have Luna World Alua. So now I deleted my file, so I'm just gonna move all of this over to Luna World Alua. Save that. And change this to data.world. Um, but now, um, we want to change up a few things. In order to make this accessible in all of the levels of the episode, you want to put underscore G, put this in brackets and quotations. This will just make it global, and it'll be able to be accessed by all the Luna Lua files you could ever dream of. And by that, I mean all the ones in the episode. So now... Oh, this isn't gonna draw the counter, um, but... Um, uh, no, I'll close that. There we know that's not what I want to do. So in case I'll just put my counter in here. So yeah, we've got the counter in here, one. And so now we'll just hop into another my regular Lua testing level. Increase the counter. And we'll hop into the other test level. And there you go. So that's basically all you need to know about the data class. Data, 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 data. And just, there you go. Just do whatever that you want with it. You can save collectibles or level completion variables or whatever. You can do anything. I believe in you. I don't even know what I'm going to do for next time. And I'm not going to randomly decide anything like I did at the end of the NPCs video. So whatever happens, happens. Goodbye.